What's up, YouTube? And Spotify, Google Podcasts, all that lot. Google Podcasts, does that still exist? I think it died recently. Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> to the, <laughs> Welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. I'm Alex. I'm Reef Talk. And with me, as always, is Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website. Hang on. PrestigeReef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? I forgot how to, what I had to Not say. good. Not good. You're slacking, aren't you? Uh, I'm good. Mate. Is, do I say his surname now or do I say the website? What? You're good. Uh, anyway. I, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm coughing a lot, so I've got uh, some sipping water. I've got sip. quite a lot of energy tonight. I've realised for some reason. You know, sometimes you do these live streams and you and you have lower energy. I feel yeah. like I've got a lot of energy at the moment. Okay, good stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if it, if it if it lasts. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll. Uh, yeah. What have you been doing? Why what have so I been energetic? doing? Yeah. What, in, in my my week. No, why, why are you so energetic? I think I had a late coffee today. If I'm honest. Right. Okay. So, um, so it's not worn off yet. I think I had it at like four thirty. I see. I don't drink coffee, so I don't. I don't understand. Oh, I remember when whenever Alex comes over to my house, I have to go out specifically just to go get milk for him because he has a tea, which he then drinks half of and then leaves half of it every single time. Oh, my phone just gone. Someone's just sold a curl. <laughs> <laughs> that is. I might leave that on because then people get instant gratification yeah. if they if they order it while on the live stream. <laughs> um, yeah. So Alex, Alex makes me go get milk for him. I've and got then, one question though. Yeah. What kind of an animal doesn't have milk in the house? Um, I don't drink tea. I only drink espresso. It's like a real man. Cereal? So, espresso is like a real man. I don't drink. I don't eat cereal either. So yeah, real men eat, real men drink espressos and whiskey. So do you like know. whiskey? No. My point proven. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to like whiskey, but um, I, someone bought me a bottle of Oban. Do you know what Oban is? It's Scotch. No. And it, but it's like really oaky, and it, and it's like when you open it, you can smell the wood, and it was disgusting. It was wasted on me, completely wasted on me. Where has it gone now? Oh, I, th I can't. I think I gave it away. I like had one sip of it. I was like, don't want it. <laughs> it oh, was well. I think it, I think Oban's quite a nice <laughs> Scotch. Like proper whiskey drinkers would like it, but yeah, it was horrible, disgusting stuff. But I'd like it's cool. It's a cool drink to drink. Yeah. But that's, but I just drink um, <clears throat> beer in a whiskey glass, and then people think I'm drinking. Oh, that's a full glass of whiskey. God, he can hold his beers, can't he? He has drinks. That's, that's <laughs> true. So uh, anyway, whiskey, uh, whiskey chat over. <laughs> um, what's uh, how's your weekend reefing been? Not bad, actually. Uh, there was there was like an outpouring of people um, from last week, wasn't there? I don't know if you. So I I will sometimes go back occasionally and look at the comments upon the video. And everyone was like commenting. Yeah, yeah. There were right. so many comments, so much support from people, um, <clears throat> which was nice. Um, mm. I didn't tell people because I wanted support. I, t I told people because I think it's it's important that people go, look, this person who's been doing it for a long time suffers sometimes too. Yeah. So the, when I'm going through something, it's just normal. That's It's just normal in this hobby. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously for people who weren't here last week, uh, the water box got white spot. The fish were all fine. They had white spot, but they no, nothing died. Um, so I had a choice. Um, I either took all the fish out and quarantined them again, or I leave them to it. Uh, because of the cost of the angel fish, I decided to take them all out, um, which has been an absolute nightmare, like a nightmare. <laughs> so every single day since so it starts on Monday, I've been able to catch fish gradually over a period of time. Uh, and now I'm down to the last one, which is a yellow assessor. And yellow assessors, if you're going to put one in your tank, you make sure you bloody want it. Because <laughs> that thing is never coming out. Yeah. Um, it's uh, So they, it, it, it will catch copepods in the tank, um, which means even though I've starved it by not feeding it for three days, it, it just has no interest in the food in the trap. It just does not care. So... Um, and I obviously I can't start the fallow period, uh, which is going to be seven weeks, I believe. I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure it's seven weeks until um, and, until I've caught that last fish. Right. So. Um, so, so yeah, you need, you need a plan. What are you? Yeah, using? I need a bloody harpoon. I need, I need like a little yeah. miniature harpoon. Are you um, using like an aquamedic fish trap? Yes. So yeah. And and at uh, first it was going so smoothly because I was catching like four fish at a time. They they're pretty they're used to the trap being in there because sometimes they use it for um, acclimation, mm. and I will put the trap in, but I don't try and catch the fish. There's no there's literally no point on the first day, 
you might as well put it in there and then leave it for a day and then try the next day when they're when they're used to it uh, otherwise it just frustrates you uh so yes yeah, so I, I did that um the king i went in straight away which was great um along with the both the tangs went in as well uh, and those were the ones that needed the treatment the most so um so i was happy that i got those out and copper works surprisingly quickly it works really, really quickly with with white spot, and okay. also obviously they're going into a tank that don't have it. Does with when you're treating copper, do you have to wait for? Because obviously white spot has certain stages when it get when it's in the fish and then when it's out of the fish and it sits and all this sort of stuff. Do do you have to? You can you only kill the disease when it's not in the fish when it's in its free floating stage? I believe that's correct. Yes. Right. Okay. So okay. I don't. I think I don't. I'm not sure how long it remains on the fish for. I think it's only like two or three days. Yeah. Um. But what I noticed is there were white spots on the fish. Three days later, there's nothing on them. So it that obviously it's the copper that's preventing it getting back onto the fish. Or it also yeah. might be because the obviously the quarantine tank is brand new, so there was no parasites swimming around in the water either. So. I've just I've just googled I googled white spot came up with fresh water so I had to google cryptocarrion ir irritants I couldn't spell it that's why it took me time but <laughs> life cycle is oh it doesn't tell the days that's no good oh no it does here we go right so uh trophont three to four days and it looks like that's in the fish in the goods. yeah I th that's why yeah I thought it was two or three days or <laughs> then it goes on to tomont for three to four days and it looks like that's outside of the fish then it goes on to theront uh, for 36 hours from the looks of it this is i'm just sort of like quickly glancing at something so you know i, I might be getting this wrong but basically don't tell people that, that yeah, the, <laughs> the ones on the podcast can't see you which means they're going to think you're well smart <laughs> i know yeah uh, this so it's in the fish for three or four days and then four four to six days from the looks of it it's in it's it is when you can kill it that's uh, you know so that's quite a, a short life cycle isn't it <laughs> I mean, if you could, I guess yeah. that's why it, it blows up at the purport, the population goes crazy. So, yeah, but it also means that if you actually get the fish out, it's pretty easy to treat if you, as long as it's in, yeah, okay, um, it's in copper. Mm -hmm. So, it's, um, it does make me nervous. Obviously, there's like 12 fish, some of them are quite big in a 150 liter quarantine tank. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it does have an ammonia checker on it. And so far, it's still yellow. And I also, I took, filter media out of the water box and i took filter media out of the other quarantine tank which was, was already cycled and put both of them i have two filters in the new quarantine tank yeah okay. um because what i'm gonna do once i've caught i can't add any more fish to that quarantine tank because the copper level's high now mm -hmm. so if i just add a fish to it the chances are the fish won't like the elevated levels of and copper you've got to acclimate it to it generally <laughs> so if you catch the assessor will you put it in your other quarantine the assessor is going to go into the other tank right. by itself and then i'm going to move some of the fish from the 150 liter quarantine into the new tank with no copper in it to what just new to tank? The, uh, the sorry the old copper the, the old quarantine tank so i, I have a 150 liter three. No, I have a 150 litre quarantine, which is right. the new one. Yeah. And the old one is 70 litres. Yeah. So the but, 70 but, litres. So if you, but if you put them back in the, the tank with the assessor in it, yes. you've got to start again, haven't you? But it doesn't, I'm going to have to start again anyway, because the, the fallow period is seven okay. weeks. So it doesn't really make any difference. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair enough. But I want <laughs> to lower the fish load on the 150 litre. So if I take out yeah, a couple yeah, of big fish, yeah, it yeah. makes it far less risky. Yeah. So, and again, it doesn't is it doesn't particularly make any difference because once the fish are in copper, it's not like the the assessor can then give the fish the new the the fish that have already been treated, ick again. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm probably going to leave the fish in in the copper for longer because I think it's normally like thirty days. It will probably be longer than thirty days because I'm gonna have to wait seven weeks anyway. But yeah. I won't do the whole seven weeks. That's too long. <laughs> No, no, no. But um, and so, how long will you leave it fallow? So seven weeks, you say? I will Google what humble fish recommends because humble fish is, is the god of fish disease. <laughs> I'm um, feeling it's um, it's is nine, either, three months, isn't it? Is, uh, maybe you, you might be right. I thought is it's either seven, nine, or eleven. I'm not sure which one it is. It varies depending on what disease you're dealing with. I think. Yeah, this is back from, and this is it's been a long time since I researched quarantine. We're talking. Yeah 
almost 10 years. <laughs> um, but, if, but on Ultimate Reef, to be completely safe, people used to recommend um, three months. I think at, the, at certain stages, it's like you're 90% done, but you might as well just wait a bit longer. Um, <clears throat> oh, he's got loads of different... Um, uh, loads of different. It depends on what the disease is from the looks of it, but yeah, okay. But so you, you've, you're facing, and actually, so you're, you're facing potentially three months of um, fallow, uh, fallow period in your tank. What's your plan during that period? Oh God, <laughs> just <laughs> so <laughs> having taken the tangs out immediately, algae has started to grow <laughs> because obviously the tangs were eating the algae. The mm -hmm. the phosphate levels is only like zero point zero four. Okay. Um, but immediately the, the algae started to grow. So what I have done, I turned off one of the lights. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a two of the GHL lights on at the moment just to lower the amount, the intensity. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on top of the algae, hopefully using inverts because I'm not going to turn the lights off completely because I don't want it to go back to a bare tank again. <laughs> what inverts? Uh, probably snails. I've got hundreds of them in the farm. So. Okay. I'll just probably, nails. Uh, mostly i might put an urchin in there if i've if i need to but they're sort of just you like urchins don't you love urchins <laughs> but i know uh, as soon as you said oh i'll deal with the algae with inverts i bet there would be people watching and listening who are like oh hang on what are you gonna use <laughs> yeah oh, so i i have one hermit crab in there i'm not even sure why i'm not even sure how it got in there i can't remember putting okay. it in there it's probably in one of my videos. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was probably a tester to see if if a, if a living creature can survive. <laughs> so I put the hermit crab in there. Uh, and I've got a load of snails. And they breed as well. What snails? So, um, I think they're just Mexican turbo. There's two different types. One of them is a Mexican yeah. turbo. I've got two conchs or conches. Yeah, con conchs. Conch, con I say conch, conch but it's conch. Yeah. Is a good pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, and I've also got some Nostaria snails, but they're... Um, yeah, okay. They are not algae eaters, are they? Do you not have the trochus snails, blackfoot trochus? Possibly. And then, I no, I don't think so, actually. Okay. I don't think so. But what I will keep doing, I want to keep the tank stable. So I will still put in one cube of mysis every day, mm -hmm. um, maybe every two days, just to keep the food level. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's something going into the tank. And there's still shrimp in there. Um, there's four cleaner shrimp in there and some other things so it's not like it, it will get eaten anyway and there's loads of copepods so they'll break it down as well so i just i don't want the tank to go back to being sterile or nothing because then it just keeps everything i do just so it keeps upsetting the balance <laughs> of the tank mm. so i will get there one day this tank will be absolutely beautiful and then everyone will remember all the pain i went through <laughs> to, to get to that but uh, we shall see. We shall see. That's because I've got my pet rock that's um, in a, a, a tub by my uh, yeah. side, and uh, I've not I've not been feeding it. <laughs> but I feel like I probably should because the thing I don't want it to end up just a load of phosphate water in there. But I probably should put some food in there, even yeah. if it's once a week or something, to feed the bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, Charles has asked um, if I do war changes in quarantine. Uh, I don't do war changes in quarantine usually, which is um, so th the quarantine I've been doing is 30 days. And I worked out basically if I put one cube of, of mysis, or, no, sorry, half a cube of mysis in there, it doesn't like I've quarantined everything without the need for any issues, without the need for um, the, the nitrate and phosphate doesn't get too high. So I don't need to. Um, I keep when I when I'm quarantining fish, I I feed minimally, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> just because the biggest issue in quarantine is ammonia, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So, and the fish can survive a long time being slightly underfed, whereas if you overfeed them, you can kill them over, like very quickly. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's is that. I think nothing particularly exciting has gone on with the farm. It's a bit quiet. It's weirdly quiet at the moment. Like it's very rare for for me to be um, quiet with regards to corals. Usually, all year it, mm. it's pretty consistent. There are busier times, but it's pretty consistent. Um, whereas for some reason, it's been it's been quieter the last couple of weeks. So, March, I don't know, is that? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> as soon as the weather quiet. changes and it gets a bit yeah, warmer, people are less interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's that. You always, you can tell when I'm quiet. Those people, weird people. 
Yes. I'd rather yeah. stay inside with my fish tank than go outside in the sun. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, true. True. You can tell by how white you are. <laughs> no, then I can, <laughs> no, I can yeah, hardly yeah. comment, can I? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so quiet. You haven't got any 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 exciting corals in recently. No, I haven't had any new corals in recently. But like, I don't, I don't get new stuff in unless uh, if it's quiet, because the yeah, reason, like, quiet. there's no point if people aren't buying. There's no point in getting more because it just increases my risk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that some sometimes, look, I know of a couple of shops that have done this. They've got themselves in trouble where they keep buying new stuff with the idea of getting new people in all the time. But right. it like it just there is a death tax in this hobby uh if you're a shop and if you the more stuff you have the more stuff you can kill. Yeah. And the more stuff you kill it breaks it gets in it, it eats into your profit and then those shops are no longer around anymore. So they appeared to be the best shops because they had all like they had all these expensive fish and loads of coral all the time and those shops are no longer here. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So right. interesting. Yeah. But no, I've just been just been tinkering away, if I'm honest. So just there's been yeah, just... there's, there's been a few things I've been putting off that I need to do, um, which I've now done. So Okay. That's good. Yeah. Uh what about you? Seventeen minutes and we're done with Ryan. That's very unusual. Well, i what else what else can I tell you about? I was expecting I? half an hour of nonsense. Wow, is that what you're used to? Yeah, <laughs> every week. Uh, do the uh, do the mug joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I um, no, because <laughs> it was wasn't it wasn't funny. <laughs> well, I can say actually. Well, this is not particularly related to uh to the to this, but I, I said this to you earlier, Alex. I said to Alex earlier. So every so often, I realise just how weird it is what I what I do, basically. So it, it's normal to me. I don't think anything of it that, that I wake up in the morning. I grow coral for a living. Um, now, last week, uh, I went speed dating, and when you go speed dating, you tell people what you do for a job, <laughs> and oh. those people think you're a weirdo. <laughs> so that was um, that was definitely. Uh, an experience. And actually, to be fair, like, firstly, I tell a little bit of a, a false, false truth, like false truth. I tell them I, I work in coral biology, so um, that gets, that gets me through. Oh, yeah. There's some um, truth in that. <laughs> there is, yeah, there is some. Well, Not technically, lot, but... <laughs> no, there is coral biology. Biology is the study and growing of like creatures, and that's you why don't I do study them. I do study them. I'm like, are you alive today? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, but so yeah, that made you start a relationship with a bit of dishonesty. Yep. Yeah, okay. That brings me. Are you selling back. yourself here? <laughs> no, that's true. That sometimes that brings me. Uh, it it makes me realize just how lucky I am with what I do, because when you yeah. talk to these people, most of them have boring jobs. <laughs> yeah, what you do? I work in an office. Yes, um, and people are usually like they're very very interested, um, but yeah, and the only other thing is I'm thinking about it which I, I said to alex earlier very very small thinking about it i'm thinking about going to reef of palooza very small it's like five percent chance which is a one in 20 uh because their reef palooza is in uh april in florida and i thought it'll be a laugh and i've not been away for a while so why not do it. all right so we, we were having this conversation before the stream started yeah and there is literally no reason not to do it uh true true there is no reason not to do it um but well there is because i have to leave the coral farm <laughs> yeah but for a week yeah it'll, it'll be all right you do that. Oh, no. have a christmas you go for like two months yeah no i know but i normally am well prepared long long like months in advance when i go away at christmas whereas what, I got... what day would you go away and what day would you get back day of the week? It, it's three weeks away i think i'm pretty three i think, weeks? I think uh, it's florida. No, I wouldn't go to Florida for three weeks. No, no, no. So when you go, if you get when you go to Florida, what day would you go away? What day would you go back? Uh, I'd probably arrive on Monday and fly back on Sunday. That's a week. Of, yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say because if you, if it was Wednesday to Wednesday, I'd go down on the weekend and and check in. But there's... are you going to come look after him for you? Come see your fish. Yeah, I'll start cow quest. So. <laughs> All, <laughs> you <laughs> All of your fish be twice the size. All of your fish now eat pellets. Just so you know. Um, because when I first put pellets in them, they in in there they all ignored them, whereas uh, now uh, now they all eat them. 
And uh, actually, the only other thing is I was working on a video today for the channel. Uh, I was actually doing the Reefbot video. Uh, so, Which yes. Which is what Dan the Man is asking. <laughs> uh, I'm interested. Yeah, the video, interesting. Yeah. I'm interested. Dan the Man, are you the person that messaged me asking me about, and let me just check, asking about the Reefbot? Because, no, that guy was someone called Dave. Um, <laughs> so sometimes people on, like, on a weekend, you know, at like nine o'clock at night, we'll send you a message <laughs> wanting to have a chat. <laughs> and someone did, yeah, someone did that. Um, now is the time to have a chat with me. Uh, I, uh, how is the reef bot going? It's good. I actually, I, I actually do like it. Um, it is, it is, it's quite large, which I've said in the video. Um, it's noisy, uh, but a similar level of noise to a, um, like a 3D printer. Oh, bloody hell. But that I bet doesn't, it's, not as as it's a 3D printer. <laughs> Uh, maybe not then. I don't know, but it's it doesn't. Have you have you not seen it when you were here? I've not seen it in action. Ah, uh, it doesn't bother me because it's exactly the same as my Roomba. Like I don't <laughs> okay. put my Roomba on when I'm in the house. Yeah, exactly. or when I'm awake. If you see what I mean, I, I I do these things when I'm when I'm out, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but other than that, I've ch I've checked it against um, test kits and the Hannah checker. Fine. Um, but I also um. The video isn't specifically going to be just about the reef bot. I think I'm going to do it uh, like a different slant on it with regards to because so many people when they book consultations, I ask them like when where they test, and so many people don't test. <laughs> so it's really? it's going to be like the value of testing as well as here is a reef bot. If you see what yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 I like that a lot. I'm working on a video. The the two videos I'm excited about making at the moment. One of them is um talking about testing yeah um oh yeah. Just, yeah 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 not not in the same manner as you're talking about it when, but, it, when uh, can you put out next week so i can copy it no i can't um i'll do i might do it no i don't think i'll do it next doesn't anyway whatever but yeah uh but it's so it's actually the one thing someone asked me i posted a load of photos on instagram this week uh, a couple of days ago all these ones oh yeah yeah of growth photos so this was november 2023 four months later that's that's a bad example to be fair <laughs> let me go let me move on so where, there was a gunny that looked really good this one so this was four months ago and then four months later the gunny's double the size yeah and there's there's lots like that where they're they're all the same kind of it's all the same kind of level of growth and all these corals so this is my water box lps tank and this is what my main my new tank is going to look like only three times the size and i just can't wait you um, think yeah oh no it is your no tank's going to look like mine in a year's time <laughs> no dinos no cyanobacteria none of this stuff but yeah but so but some people were a few people were like well what are your secrets what are your parameters what are you doing all this sort of stuff and actually the th this tank has looked best you never quite know why your your tank looks good because it I, you could you could have done five things uh, at once and what like i started dosing reefs elements ph plus for all i know it could be that but what the thing i think is the most likely explanation because i notice corals improving after i do it is i've tested a lot more regularly so salinity magnesium in particular um nitrate and phosphate not so much there you know, but salinity and magnesium when they've been spot on everything looks better <laughs> Uh, so it's just simple <laughs> for me salinity i noticed makes a massive difference like mm. an absolutely massive difference i didn't realize how much of a difference until you came with your salinity checker I and i lowered it down all of a sudden I look at the cars i'm like damn you're looking good it, today it's funny because so you told me about salinity you told me to check my salinity yeah i don't know six months ago i was like no it's fine i checked i was like oh my god no it's not and then but you don't think about it it's really obvious but you don't think yourself yeah, but that's so the salinity is one thing that's made a big difference. Checking it regularly because I always used to think, and I I did a video on Friday that was which no doubt you've watched. That was the seven things seven things I've learned from my this reef tank, and people might have clicked on that video expecting like a, an in depth uh, explanation of uh, bacteria or trace elements, all this sort of stuff. It was much more simple stuff. But one of the things was salinity. I used to think. With salinity, it takes care of itself because if you do water changes and if you've got an auto top off, it'll be fine because it always was. I used to test, test every few months and it was always fine. Yeah. But what, what I found now is that the more I test it uh, and the more I stop it from spiking, which it does quite often, especially yeah. on my main tank when I was dosing a lot of two part because that yes. increases salinity, of course, yeah. gently over time. But I was chucking in a lot of that stuff, full tank of Aquapora. 
Um, and that, and so just testing salinity regularly and adjusting and knocking it down basically most of the time, that's made a big difference. It's a stupid thing to be discovering 10 years into your Yeah, week. yeah, true. You wonder how, how we got this far. <laughs> I know. But the, the honest answer testing is 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 the thing that's that's got me had me got me most success recently. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. And as I said, to this day, it still surprises me how many people don't test because they they mm. will book a consultation. And what that consultation is me telling them that you need to test because I can't help you unless I know what your parameters are. Um, so that's why I might I might put that as like a condition when people I always say whenever some people have a consultation, I, I send them an email first saying like, what tell me a bit about you. Tell me a bit about your tank. What is it you want to talk about? What, what, there's a reason you want to talk to me. What is that? What do you want me to help you with? Mm. Whereas I should also add, Make sure you test your parameters, otherwise I'm not. <laughs> otherwise I'm not going to talk to you, <laughs> because there's no point in talking. Yeah. But sometimes I think people want you to. They go, "Oh, my coral died," and I go, "Well, what's your parameters?" They go, "I don't know." I go, "Well, that's that's it. That's the reason your coral died because you don't yeah, know." Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> but so, even I went, I went for months thinking oh, everything's fine, and then you test it, and you're like, "Oh God, no, it's not." <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, because if everything looks fine. And then one coral, what, I've, what I'm good at now is when one coral starts to look funny, I test everything. Yeah. I used to think everything's fine. It's just this one coral. It's probably just a fussy coral, Yeah, which is it's not the case. Yeah. And, it's, and it's normally that one is one packs in and before all the others do, you know, it might be six months before the rest do, or it might be six days. You know? Well, that's what, that's actually what I'm going to say in, in the video for the reef bot is that like, if you, if you've got a coral for a period of time, that you've had in your tank for a while and you haven't changed your lights and you haven't changed your flow and you're, and it's not like other corals have grown around it if you see like where yeah. they're blocking the flow the chances are it is your parameters yeah for sure yeah because yeah. Well, i mean it could be a pest or it could be a contaminant but what what else could it be um so so yeah people are saying there's loads of ads apparently tonight. i know i'm just trying to uh, i'm just trying to update that let me just let me just put this on full screen save that um because I saw someone, there we go. I've, I think I've I've changed it. I saw someone ask if I click away, it's saved. I should have saved it, right? I saw someone ask, "Do you do adverts? Do you guys do adverts?" And I was like, "What do you mean adverts?" And then a couple of other people started saying, "Grr, annoying adverts." First time I've seen adverts on a live stream. Now I actually change when you set these live streams up. Yeah. Or you press, you turn monetization on. You, you click and say, "Do do you want monetization? Yes or no." Yeah. And all that means is if you if you click no, they still run adverts. You just don't get paid. <laughs> so yeah, I click. Yeah. I always I just I, I click down and click yes, and that's it. And that's the end of it. This time round, I can't remember why, but I found another sub setting. I went digging and found a sub menu, and yeah. it said, "Do you want um, lots of of adverts, medium level of adverts, or or very low adverts?" Yeah. And I just I just thought put medium on, you know, and it'll be. Uh, yeah, that that sounds probably a good thing because you don't want lots of adverts are really annoying. Um, but I wonder if if doing that meant that normally they have, they have it low. Anyway, yeah. so that's possibly why. So sorry about that. But I've I've changed it and I've put it on the lower setting now, so it should be better. I but, wonder if they only show adverts after it's been uploaded. Yeah, so when, the, when it's live, yeah. there's no adverts, whereas they're oh, currently yeah. showing people adverts. Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. I so I don't. The thing I have YouTube Premium, so you don't get adverts at all. Oh yeah, look at you, you fancy man. Well, th th I I need it for YouTube basically. But when you've got YouTube Premium, it's thirteen quid a month. Yeah, it's so good. And there's normally a free trial knocking around for a couple of months. The trouble is though, I signed up. I ex I resisted it for ages. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, I'm not spending thirteen quid a month on YouTube. And yeah. then there was there was a three month trial. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. And then you have it for three months and it's so good because for a start, there's no adverts ever. So I don't yeah. ever think about that. But also things like you can lock your screen, your phone screen, and it'll still play. You can uh, you can do a little, it'll do picture in picture, it'll pop up. And so you can go and surf the internet or do other stuff. It's just so good, YouTube Premium. Mm. But then it's worth it for me because YouTube pays me. So I just yeah. use part of that money to pay for it. So I suppose I can do that too, actually. Because <laughs> I, yeah, okay. I was like you where I'm going, I'm not paying that. I'm not paying that. I'll watch the adverts. The thing, so the thing is, because everything is on a subscription these days, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. everything. So you can have millions of subscriptions. But I was thinking, again, I thought 13 quid, that's a lot for YouTube. It's not like Netflix when it's like million dollar um, budget show, multi-million dollar budget TV shows. 
it's just some two dickheads on you know talking about fish and corals for example and lo loads of amateurs like us but actually i watch more youtube than any other media than tv Me too. Or anything <laughs> so I, I i figured do you know what it's worth it because it's just i watch it all the time and youtube premium is brilliant i hate that it's 13 quid a month but it yeah. really is good <laughs> but then because of that i never see um i never see <laughs> i've just seen what you're laughing at i you, never see Wait, no, I think I don't think you think I you think I'm laughing at the uh, 13 a month is <laughs> yeah. that one. No, I'm actually laughing at the one above that where it says now Alex is giving us an ad about <laughs> about YouTube premium. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They're basically saying we we tried to get away from the ads and now you're giving us an ad in live yeah. on live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about it, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, yeah. So I've turned it. I've, I've turned that off. So with it, oh well, down anyway. Um, so I think you should that should have fixed it, but I don't. Know. I don't. I never play with the settings, so maybe that yeah. setting changed. Whatever. Well, we are Thanks. definitely not worth a thirty second ad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll be skipping that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, what else? There was someone posted a comment earlier that I was going to pull back up. Um, I can't remember what it was now. It's disappeared. Um, oh, actually, no, I know what it was. Sky Crusader super chat. Thanks very much. Reef Dork industry standard for phosphate levels. Just give me a super chat just so he can rinse me because he knows I'll have to read it out. <laughs> someone, but, someone, someone messaged me today about their phosphate and it was like, I can't remember how high it was. He said, Oh, is this, is this of concern? I said, Don't worry, Reef Dogs are higher than that. <laughs> so that was literally my response. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing with, so with parameters, I actually don't really care about um, nitrate and phosphate anymore. Yeah. No, I, I care, but I, like I found when I, so I set up, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the stuff I've been doing actually. So I set up um, the, because I closed down my, my main tanker course, I had the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The smart test, the refactory smart test to spare. And I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll test phosphate on my water box then. Yeah. And when I did so, my first time I tested it was, so this was my old tank. The, the, the main tank was 0 0.12, 0 0.11, 0 0.1. That was my phosphate. And then when I set up on my water box, 0 0.4, 0 0.45. And this is when I started dosing lanthanum, this um, phosphate RX, blue vet RX, whatever it is anyway. Yeah. Um, and that's slowly gone down from 0 0.4 to 0 0.3. And, that, and now it's down to, what was it today? 0 0.23. So I do care in that I'm trying to get it down a little bit. But when it was at 0 0.4, corals look fantastic. And my nitrates, my nitrates went to zero. So I started dosing and yeah. they're back up to five or six now. But I don't really massively care about, of all the water parameters, nitrate and phosphate are the ones that I care about least, especially on this tank. On SPS corals, maybe it's different. But on this tank, I'm not noticing. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to hope is that I will start to see a difference when my phosphate comes down to a normal level because 0.23 is still pretty high. But those the, the, the parameters that change mo things mostly for this tank are salinity and magnesium. Salinity, so magnesium changes. Uh, no, no, no. As in, so if like if my magnesium or salinity are off, yeah. When I fix them, that has the most significant Im improvement. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's because they're so far off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So what was I going to say? So oh, so that's the, that's uh, phosphate. So phosphate is actually coming down. So from zero point four to 0 0.23 uh which is good and that's just because an automatic tester so they are good and you've got the reef bot which is going well so yeah 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 i'm happy don't look don't you worry you've got another 26 minutes to fill considering you made me fill half an hour i know so, yeah. i feel good about that <laughs> i'm just gonna sit here silently someone made a good point um that said 13 quid for an ad blocker which is effectively what youtube premium is it does do more things to be fair but, that's but good also yeah people have to remember youtube also pays content creators to be on there so it's providing a service similar to what disney or anyone else does so it's not like it's yeah. not like youtube is taking all that money for themselves they have to pay people to be on the platform adverts never used to bother me before i had youtube premium it never used to bother me i, I don't no one likes adverts but <laughs> i was never fussed about it um but now i don't have them at all it's just it's, it's bliss my uh, attention span is so short that if an advert comes up the problem is they play the same adverts over and over again but yeah, if, yeah. if an advert comes up, I then go back and click back onto the video until I find an advert I'm willing to watch. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> true, rather than sit there for 30 seconds. That's very weird. <laughs> Why don't you just mute it or something? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have the mental capacity to even watch it. Okay. Um, Jay Ellis. Oh, no, no, hang on. 
where was it? Any suggestions for a magnesium test kit? Says Gary McConnell. Salifert. Where's my Salifert? Oh, in fact, so I've 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 tested so much I've run out of reagent, <laughs> so that there, there are no bottles there. But Salifert for magnesium. Uh, it's yeah. cheap and it's easy to read. It's consistent. It's a accurate. fancy uh, fancy test kit holder you've got there. Well, it is Ryan actually, and it's you. You might notice that it's in the same color Salifert as the Salifert magnesium. Oh, you can fancy. buy one from reefdoc.etsy.com. So you know. There you go. Um, but you Salifert, go one more ad. <laughs> <laughs> no. I use Salifert for magnesium and calcium. Um, and I, I wouldn't, I would prefer Salifert than Hanna, even though the Hanna is thick end of 100 quid. You might think it's much better. I think Hanna, uh, sorry, Salifert for calcium and magnesium is is the best option. I, don't, I wouldn't want anything else. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm, I'm the same with you. Even if the Salifert one was 100 quid and the Hanna one was 10 quid, I'd buy the Salifert. Yeah. Highest yeah. praise I can give it. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, but what was I going to say? Uh, oh, and yeah, so Jay Ellis says, how much did you pay Kalamazoo Reefer for the praises he gave you? He was so over the top. That was, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was embarrassed by, uh, how nice he was, but I really appreciated it as well. I'm used to it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, right. Uh, anything, anyway, so moving on. So I've, I've got a, um, where is it? Over my shoulder there, there. That's a KH keeper that I've set up on my Cade because I've got a, um, I've got a spare. I've got spare auto testers all over the place now. So suddenly I've got a KH keeper on a fifty liter, no, hundred liter tank, which is overkill, but it's really useful to have. But that is that's a brand new KH keeper because my last one broke, and that's now the third KH. This is the KH keeper plus. That's the yeah. third one I've had. So the first one I had um, broke for it came up with the, these error codes and they couldn't fix it, um, so they replaced it. The second one, I lasted. I don't know, six months, a year, maybe you can go back and oh, I know you won't be able to tell anyway, probably six months to a year. And then it, um, it stopped drawing water in from the tank. And when I sent off the photos to support, they said that the, the dosing pump wasn't seated correctly, which meant it had twisted the tubes or cracked the tubes or something like that. So this is now the third one, <laughs> but, uh, it's working well now <laughs> and it, with a bit like this won't, uh, this won't go wrong, but I was slightly surprised to go through three. Have you have you Googled any reviews on them to see if other people are having the same problem? I did when I made my own reviews, but not since then. I've seen, I've not, I've not, no, I've not really. My I'm just interested to see if it's like, what, statistically speaking, what are the chances for you to have two go wrong, if you see what I mean? Yeah, you can't usually. be the only one. I've got the KH Keeper, the standard one, the first one they ever brought out that was too small that they decided to upgrade. Yeah. That has been running sweet as an up for two years, probably three years now maybe no problems whatsoever but this one a couple of issues but but yeah well, a bit unusual to get a couple go wrong yeah but it's, it's a relatively new product isn't it yeah yeah this is very true but there are teething only... issues whenever a new product comes out so very true. um but what was i going to say uh oh yeah so other stuff so i am absolutely at the moment i'm loving making videos so I've got, I've just, I've, I've, I just, I I don't know if it's because it was uh, like in January and February, January in particular is depressing, isn't it? So when you get into closer to spring and the um, the, the, the evenings are longer, yeah. I'm re there's a few videos I'm really excited about making. And actually I've made a, a video on my motorbike channel today as well. <laughs> and I did one on my um, Reef Talk Extra channel. I've got kind of half a dozen videos that I'm, I really want to make. Um, and this has coincided I, 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 about a month. I had an email from a manufacturer about a month or so ago uh, saying now your channel's plateaued what's your plan to fix it <laughs> and i was like no it's plateau does it but i think i've probably said that at some point but i wanted to clarify what that means because actually this week i overtook mr saltwater tank and oh, yeah. by the end by yeah by the end of uh, today i'll have overtaken mad hatter's reef and within six months i'll have overtaken inappropriate reefer may loves reef sea friendly reef and air and aquarium in terms of subscribers is this are you just like is this turns like a brag fest because that's Basically. normally me doing that <laughs> i know yeah so, so, sorry for the, the humble brag but th so and those are all channels that when i when i was I had a very small channel i was like wow they're brilliant they're they're really big channels yeah yeah so actually and when i've said before that like if i said oh you know it doesn't go like it did before when i had like five or ten thousand subscribers every year it would double in size yeah i'd go from five to ten from ten to twenty yeah. And it was just like expert. That's never going to continue. Now, when you get to sort of 40, 50,000 subscribers, yeah. I currently have just under 70. There's no way I'm going to double 70. 
But actually, if you look at every, there's a website called Social Blade that you've used before, yeah. and you can it's not a hundred percent reliable, but you can map where everybody is. And there's only one channel that consistently outperforms mine in terms of subscribers and views, and that's the main BRS channel. And on both of those metrics, at any one time, I will be top five, usually top three. So whilst I've said in the past, you know, oh, you know, it's not going as well as it has in the past, that's all relative. And actually, yeah. it's flying. And I've had a, a, I've overtaken a big channel this week and got more to come in the next few months. So sorry about the bragging. Not really so it has me. not plateaued is what you're saying. Well, it, in a way it kind of has, but uh, in another way, it's never been bigger. And I'm doing, I've got two channels. I've got a podcast. I've got the live stream. I just, I love that someone sent you an email. How offensive is that? <laughs> I love that someone sent you an email saying, now no, that your did. channel has plateaued. <laughs> it did make me laugh. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Button yeah. up. But, um, but no, so I think, I think, I, I think it's fair enough because I think I probably have said something along those lines. Yeah. I'm one of the last years for, but, um, but I just wanted to give context because maybe they were trying to knock your confidence before they wanted something from you. Yeah. Give them a kick. And so I think I'm worthless. Mm, true. Um, but just, yeah. Uh, so, you know, not very British to, to, to do that sort of, to brag, you know, but I just want to give context because actually the town's going really, I'm, and I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Um, I actually have also, I, there must be something to do with weather or something because I've, the last two weeks, obviously I made videos. I was working on another one today and I actually wish that I had done a third consecutive week, if you see what I mean, of yeah. not the reef ball. Reef ball, I have to do like a, a specific, like you have to get a certain amount of information in it. It's not like a one you can, there's a lot more effort involved with those videos. Mm. Um, whereas I, I actually wanted, I think on Wednesday this week, I wanted to make my own video just of like catching the fish and stuff like that. But so there's something, there's, there is definitely something where you want to start doing it again. Yeah, I'm sure it's the time of year because when the evenings get longer, all right, it's dark now, but when the evenings get longer, it feels better. You feel a bit more energetic. And so I don't know, maybe yeah. that's it. I usually make mine in the middle of the day, though, on a Sunday. Every Sunday is usually when I make mine. And I've done that consistently for like when I actually do make the video. If I try and make it on a Friday, I cannot do it. <laughs> it's only because I literally make it on a Sunday and post it on a Sunday usually. It's like that yeah. deadline, that feeling of like urgency, which is what gets me motivated. I yeah, see, I always schedule stuff for the same time, so everybody knows what to expect. No, no, it's not that for me. I like to wait till last minute and then do it. <laughs> is that what? So, conscient, conscient, conscientious reefer says. Any tips for a new reefing YouTuber? Is that what you tell him? Just wing yeah. everything. <laughs> do everything last minute. <laughs> um, any tips? You don't need anything fancy. And just make videos consistent, consistently, even if you don't think they're very good, post them anyway and just keep posting every week until eventually you'll get good. Because my video first videos were rubbish. Alex's videos are still rubbish. Uh, so, no, it's true. My, yeah. my, well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that been nice. yeah. <laughs> But what I'm saying is like you will not be very good at the beginning. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah. Probably. Um, and don't go and buy loads of fancy equipment until you actually. So the funny thing on, on equipment and, you know, I'm not going to try to sell everybody cameras and that sort of stuff, but I watched that there's a motorbike uh, YouTuber who's, I don't know, caught a million subscribers, which is quite big in the UK. And he made a video recently uh, with his top tips on how to set up a, a motorbike YouTube channel. And the first thing, and he's sponsored by Insta360. And it was basically that video was an advert. And he was like, yeah, you want to buy it. And it's a 500 quid camera. It's like, yeah, you want to get this 500 quid camera and then you want to get all this. Other. It's like, you don't need all that. You just, and with, with, with reef keeping, yeah. you need your mobile phone and a, a lav mic is a 10 quid lav mic that you can plug into your mobile phone. That makes the world of difference because tinny audio puts people off, but a proper lav mic that for 10 quid that you plug that, into your phone, that's all you need. That is so true. That is so, so audio is far more important for people, for capturing people's attention mm -hmm. than video. People Crazy. will watch a grainy video or a video that's not particularly high definition. Whereas if the audio is rubbish, they will turn it off immediately. So that yeah. is the, that is the most important thing I'd say actually. But yeah, so but yeah, just you're right. Make make load of video. Keep going. Power through yeah. when they're a bit crap. Well, the one thing I did well, I when I tried when I started out, I watched. There were it's probably a little bit different now because there's more um, more variety and that sort of stuff but i looked at a few of the channels that i watch regularly and there were some things that they did that i didn't like there was one channel that doesn't exist anymore 
uh, that um, used to make product reviews, and it would be like a, you're trying to work out. It'd be like it's Aaron's Aquarium, I'm assuming. Dan's Reef. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't really mean, but it was he'd make 20 minute product reviews, and I came away thinking I didn't learn anything about that. I, I, there's 10 things I wanted to know. Yeah. So what I did was when I made product reviews, like I sat down before and thought, what do people want to know? And and so I tried to do things that uh, that other people didn't do that I wanted to do. And there were things that Aaron's Aquarium did as well that I was like, I don't like that. I'm going to change it and do this. So try to find, try to watch videos. And ultimately, what I tried to do was make the videos I wanted to see. So I was like, this is the kind of video I, I like. It doesn't really exist. So I'm going to make that. Yeah. And that's, uh, but just, but yeah, make as, upload as often as you can. Don't worry too much about, like one thing I got into the, uh, when I started, I was trying to upload regularly and I found like I could upload once a fortnight, once a month easily, but I wanted to upload every week. And I did, I did this little series called Tweak of the Week. It was rubbish. <laughs> and it was, it was something it like, something like <laughs> yeah, it was something I did. It was just novelty gimmick. You don't need to be, you don't need to try to be a, a, like a presenter or have a, a novelty or a gimmick. And it was, but it was just something I'd done to my tank every week. And it was just boring. And I was uploading for the sake of uploading. So don't do that far better to upload quant quality and then the quantity will come anyway because you get more ideas and all this sort of stuff but but yeah try to upload as often as you can a uh, 10 quid lav mic is all you need and uh try to make the videos that you would like to see the most important thing as well is enjoy doing it don't do it because you think you're going to be a big youtuber because statistically speaking it's very unlikely you will get to that stage unless you enjoy doing it because you have to go through months and months of pe of like 10 views on a video <laughs> or it will take a long time before you actually build up a, a regular following. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually enjoy do it what you do. And, and it's like a hobby. Don't, don't do it because you think you're going to be famous or well, we're not famous is a stupid way of putting it because we're not famous, but don't do it because you think you're going to get free products. Don't do it for any reason other than you love showing people your tank, editing videos and, and having people go, yeah, this is nice. But also accept that people are going to also tell you your crap because that happens too. <laughs> it's true. I had a great comment on one of my videos actually. And I hardly, I don't reply to a lot of my comments, but it was someone who commented on a, a video about Xenia. And the guy said, if you can't get Xenia out of your tank, can you even feed yourself? <laughs> I was basically saying it's invasive. And, and once it's yeah. in, it's difficult yeah. to get out. Yeah. And, Bloody and, impossible. I, and I naturally, being me, I replied saying, do you know who I am? <laughs> have you? No, I didn't know quite like that. I said, have you ever checked my, the, the other videos on my channel? Um, and he he wrote no. And I replied saying, saying yeah, probably best you don't or something like that. <laughs> You love having a pop at people, don't you? In the couple, I, if someone writes something nice, I like I literally it it, I've, it will go over my head. If someone writes something that's a bit like I shit, know. I'm Stick. like I want I don't it doesn't offend me, so I don't reply because it's offensive. I if I reply because I think they're idiots, <laughs> and I <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to find it, but I can't. I, I don't know where it's gone now. The only other thing I'll say, by the way, is um, with uh, on on uh, on uh, advice for a YouTube channel. You don't. You shouldn't ever chase the algorithm, and you, you can't help but do that. Actually, no matter how much you don't want to, but uh, it is demoralizing if you're uploading loads of videos and you're getting like five or six views or a hundred views or whatever. And one thing that's good to do is for a new channel, product reviews do well. So if you could, and because if, if you're brand new, you've probably not been given stuff for free, so you can be completely honest and completely right. open. And people really appreciate those videos, especially if you've had something long term. Make it long. There aren't many long term reviews around, so they're really useful. They get more views than just uploading a video of your tank generally. But also, what I did as well was I started. I went on all the all the channels I followed. I'd sorted videos by high to low in terms of the most number of views and worked out what people wanted to watch. So people love watching sump videos. <laughs> people love watching videos about setting up a new tank. And there's jellyfish. certain jellyfish. Jellyfish. Well. jellyfish. Why? <laughs> but there, there are certain videos that you'll be able to work out that just generally do well. So if you've got a Red Sea Reaper 250, for example, make a video about the sump and you'll get views. I, I mean, that's especially if you had a brand new tank in particular. But anyway, whatever. Uh, carping, uh, carping on with Hammy has asked where the farm is. The farm is uh, in the south of England. It's not. It's about probably half an hour from Brighton. So I'm in. Uh, I'm in West Sussex. But it, it tells you on um, on 
every single post on Facebook and Instagram where where the farm is. Okay. Um, yeah, she's just because he's asking. And uh, Lycia says that uh, she should bully me more. Bring it on. Ah. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I have an incredibly thick skin. And uh, I can, let's put it this way, I give it pretty good, don't I? I'm more than happy to say things. <laughs> the other day I annoyed you just because I was bored. Um, so I, I have to accept, I have to expect some in return. I, I'm actually waiting for you to re for um, the repercussions of that. Okay. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Instagram post. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't see, this is funny because you would well, tell people what you did. <laughs> I was, I was bored the other day. I was in the gym and I was bored and I thought, I'm going to annoy Alex. I've not annoyed Alex for a while. Um, so I posted uh, a link for Alex's Etsy store, Reef dot dot exe dot co dot uk no dot com, com for god's sake <laughs> uh on my instagram story and then after that i put dot 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 all um all uh profit from this will go towards alex's hair transplant or something like that yeah and and then i send it i send no you saw it didn't you but you didn't see the second bit so you thought yeah, i was being genuinely post. nice <laughs> yeah yeah so i reposted i was like, oh thanks ryan <laughs> yeah you said, yeah, you reposted it, not realizing the second bit was me taking the piss out of you. And it was literally, it was just because I was bored and I thought, I'm going to annoy Alex. So as I said, I can, I can, uh, I can, I mean, I'm waiting for the repercussions of that, but we shall see. I'll build something up big. But, you're you're um, pretty calm and placid though, aren't you? Yeah. You yeah. yeah. Well, you I, so I like, I, I like banter. So I'm, I, I welcome people taking the piss out of you. <laughs> I did wonder if that would annoy you when I did it. I was like, is this going to annoy Alex? And then I thought, actually, Alex doesn't give a shit about anything. No, I started getting bored at the age of 20. I'm used to people taking the piss out of me for it. So it's totally fine. <laughs> there, there's, so, there, I, I knew someone um, previously who a uh, guy was bored as well. And I kind of like, I, try, I, I got to know him over the course of a couple of years. And then I decided let's have a bit of bald banter and he didn't like it at all. <laughs> so some people can be sensitive, but anyway. Yeah. Well, I think people can tell from how we are every single week that neither of us are sensitive. No, indeed. Uh, although you're sensitive to negative comments, you and I have very different approaches. So if someone, if someone <laughs> has a pop at me, I'll generally ignore them. No, see, that you, didn't... you like to fire back. No, no, yeah, but I don't fire back because I'm annoyed. I fire back. It's like a sport. No, I know. Yeah, I know. But just... <laughs> it's like, so I replied to that guy. He then replied to me again. And then I replied again. And then he hasn't responded. So I won <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> no one's won in that. Situation. And then what I usually do is I will pin their comment to the top of the video so that other people can tell him he's an idiot as well. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. See, I don't like if I do sometimes find that if someone um, posts a negative comment, other people start piling in replying to defend me. And yeah. that's that's really nice, but I don't like that because it's like it ends up people arguing, and it's like so you know. <clears throat> it, it, if it's if it's something where I can't, mm, I don't know, I don't know. As I, I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've told you this before. Um, obviously, at one point I was a lady, wasn't I, when I had a YouTube channel? Um, you probably need to explain <laughs> that, but yeah. <laughs> so obviously, I, I um, the original channel uh, was started with uh, my ex girlfriend at the time. Uh, and she was obviously the face of the channel. So just to clarify, when I was a lady, uh, was that moment. Mm -hmm. And when you are a lady in this, uh, as a YouTuber, you get a whole different experience. And there was one person that decided to, remember, I dealt with all the comments, all the social media, everything, that decided to send me, one man decided to send me a picture of their, you know, gentleman regions. <laughs> This is pretty funny, to be fair. <laughs> so what I did is I found that person on Facebook. I found all of the people that were related to that person on Facebook by their surname. And then I responded to their picture of their penis by saying, here is a picture of all the people you know. Which one would you like me to send the picture that you just sent me to first? <laughs> and then that person then panicked. They yeah. absolutely shit themselves. <laughs> mm. Um, and I can assure you that person never sent another picture of their penis to anyone else ever again. Well, that, that's a criminal offence now. It's called well, cyber flashing, I think. Is it? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, but it, it's pretty disgusting. So I, 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 I wouldn't. If you'd have actually sent sent those photos to his parents or whatever, yeah. I wouldn't have any problem with that because that's the sort <laughs> of thing that his family might say to him. What is wrong with you? Yeah. No, that's, of course. That's, but that's so unacceptable. I just yeah. like. Yeah, I just wonder has that ever worked for anyone? <laughs> I, but you hear about it all the time so it, i don't know it's just but why do you want to do that like what are you expecting someone to go oh wow that's amazing 
a free oh. nap, you know. Depends how impressive you are. <laughs> but I think it does, to be honest. <laughs> but it's hey. like that that's what I mean. I see these people sometimes as it's like a sport for me. Because I'm yeah. like, if I can if it's just a comment going, you're an idiot, I'll I don't care. I'll just delete it or whatever. But well, if it's if it's something that's like where I can have a bit of fun with it, yeah, then then I'm I'm fair game. <laughs> Fair enough. I just like positivity. I don't like yeah. uh, anyway. Whatever tangent. We have gone off on a tangent. Um, uh, what else? So the, the whole title of the stream was uh, "The Tank Is Gone." So I should give you a tank update. There's not really much to That'd say about it. It went this weekend. The physical tank went this weekend. Um, it, it got collected, and so that is now out of my uh, out of my room. And my missus already started taking the wallpaper down. <laughs> um, but we're, so next weekend we're going to be doing some decorating. Because bank holiday weekend in the UK, yeah. so four days off work in, in a row. So we'll do some decorating that weekend. And then after that, I'm going to order the tank. And then it's three weeks. I've got to give three weeks notice. It might be four weeks before they get it, five weeks, whatever. Um, I, I'm in no rush. But it'll be probably a month from now-ish is when the tank will arrive and I'll be able to do a proper reveal. Oh, you, we... you should be in a rush. That that fish bill is getting expensive. You know, that the, uh, the You're fish feeding hotel the pellets. You're saving money. I, I don't know if I am saving what, what? Why, why would feed them pellets? I suppose, yeah, it's cheaper than, than mice. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Feeding them tripe. I need to get them back on a proper diet. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, they've got a much more varied diet with you, to be fair. It's good. Yeah. They're going to hate it. They're going to be like, oh, this dickhead, <laughs> when they come back. Yeah, it's like, an, it's like a fish hotel for them. Oh, shrimp again. Great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Sorry, um, I dropped you. No, well, so that's about a month or so until uh, till it's um, it's all gone. So uh, till the tank is is um, is back, the new tank is in place. But in the meantime, I just I'm so enjoying my water box. It's just so awesome. Uh, although I've got Aptasia, Where, where's my Aptasia X? So I bought. I've got one. I've got two Aptasia. So I bought Aptasia X today. I've got a. Um, there's a guy I messaged um, uh, on who's got Bergy and Nudibranchs. So one of them's too big, so I need to zap it down a bit. Yeah. But um, I'm going to buy some bergiers and put them in there because I have no rats in the water box at the moment. So the plan is zap the the two big. There's only one really big one. Zap that and then put the bergiers in and see what they do. The, the, so the guy I'm buying the bergiers off, he had a load of them. They just kept breeding, and he yeah. was selling them as fast as he could, basically. But what he said, he found that sometimes the aptasia can eat the bergiers. Really. Yeah, so it's a, an Aptasia eating nudie brain getting eaten by an Aptasia. <laughs> so the, it, that is an a nudie an Aptasia a, eating nudie brain eating like Aptasia. Aptasia. <laughs> yeah. So, which I'd, I'd never heard that before. That's I, that was interesting, but um, but I'm trying to. I've only got a couple. I don't really care. Weirdly, so I noticed one the other day, I, a month or so ago, um, in one particular spot, and it disappeared. A, like a few weeks later i just left it and it disappeared but i can i know there's at least two and if you can see two there's probably a hundred <laughs> or yeah. more but um it is a bit annoying having aptasia in that tank because the only problem is if when this so the new tank will be all lbs so i can't get a copper band yeah. i can't get a pile fish <laughs> um so i'm limited really and peppermint shrimp i would i've always been fine with peppermint shrimp until i got one that started eating my torch coral and now i'm like uh... <laughs> you all um You'll have a copper band, I reckon. No way, no way. Not with LPS. Not with a LPS dominated tank. Different story. Mm, Too risky. No, I have a copper band every tank. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think I'd have one long term. Nah, no, nah, I don't want it. I don't want it. Copper <laughs> bands used to be like thirty quid. They're now like seventy five quid. I think seventy five quid. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, they're not cheap. They're yeah, not cheap they were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but uh, if you want one of those, you know, prestigious prestige reef cod bands, you let me know. Yeah, lots of ads. I quit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, sorry, I'm not a lot I can do about it to be honest. But um, anyway, yeah. So pep uh, peppermint shrimp, I would um, I would normally go for. But having had when you have one bad experience, yeah. it makes you more nervous. Even though I've, I've had dozens of peppermint shrimps over the years, and they've all been fine except for this one. But when you get that one, you're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> Burgiers are usually the way to go, but the problem is you will have RAS, obviously. So well, that's the problem. When the, the new tank is up and running, I will have RAS. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, you've got you've got two, haven't you? At the moment, you've got the yeah. mystery RAS. Is it mystery RAS? Yeah, yeah. and the that black and white one. Yeah, the leopard RAS. Um, yeah. And I'll probably have a couple more as well. But I haven't decided if I'm going to go if I'm going to have sand or not yet. I've bought sand, so I probably am. 
But at, like this, the water box at the moment is bare bottom. First time yeah. I've ever gone bare bottom. And it's just looking so good. And I, that's not necessarily just because because it's bare bottom, of course. Yeah. But when, when you have some, a tank that is so successful like that and the cars look so healthy, it makes me think, well, why would I set it up any differently? <laughs> but I like having a, a fish that live in the sand and that sort of stuff. So okay. I think I probably will. And it looks better. No, I, as in, I would never ever have a tank that didn't have sand in it. Like yeah. obviously, the coral farm has no sand in it, but the, I, it's just it just looks weird. Do you know the best tank I ever had was my was my thousand liter tank. And if you've never had a tank like this, you won't understand how life changing it is. The the thousand liter tank had a lip around the bottom of the tank, yeah, so you okay. couldn't see the sand. So you know that, that like green and brown and all the rubbish yeah, yeah. that you see. If you like, I hate that. Um, and if ever I had a custom tank built, I would have that that built in the same because all the Red Sea tanks and the water box tanks, I notice it every day. <laughs> the Nias Opus series, I think, has a it's it's recessed down that's but only weird, about an that's, inch or something. That's weird. So my one had it, it was almost like it was a normal stand and then it came out slightly and then it covered up just like that. Okay. So yeah. it wasn't like the whole thing was sitting down into it. Because I think the the Nios tanks look a bit. I mean, each to their own. Some people will like them, but I think for me they look a bit odd. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Alex, apparently peppermint shrimp eat bagheer. Uh, I'd be slightly surprised at that, but that's not a problem because I wouldn't have both at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So I don't know though because I, I just like the idea of going bare bottom because this one's been so good. But I like sand; it does look good. Although in my, in my main tank, my SPS tank. The sand bed got blown all over the place because it had high flow. Yeah. And the stuff that settled that didn't get blown about because it was in a flat spot was all dark colored because it was covered in algae. <laughs> I'm just recommending it so it increases your chance of getting diatoms. Because I've always yeah. <laughs> everyone's going, everyone's gonna be rooting for you. And I'm going, I'm gonna be going like, please don't be better. <laughs> but the um yeah, I don't know. I probably will go for sand to be fair. Yeah, but I just uh, I do like the idea because it does. It doesn't look the same without sand. So that tank looks fantastic, the water box. But having a black bottom all the way across, it just looks a bit dark and bleak. Yeah. And that, that white sand does make it look a bit better. So I probably will go for it. But the other I'm thing that my thousand liter tank had, it had a dark blue background, which I actually exactly. so all tanks these days have black backgrounds. I've, yeah. As far as I know, I've never. I've not. Whereas the dark blue background, I actually preferred because it. Like the black can completely wash out some fish where yeah. you just cannot see them. <laughs> okay. Um, the... So I. Oh, sorry. Come on. No, come on. I was just going to say, it, actually, it wasn't dark blue. It was actually light blue, but it wasn't too light. Blue. I was going to say, so I had a light blue. This was my yes. first ever tank. Light, I mean, it's covered in crud there, but you can see that's kind of light blue. Um, People would dream to have that as their first ever tank. <laughs> Really? Oh, look at all the Aptasia. And this is uh, Dino Flagellus, I think. And I know, but it's like an SPS tank, which people, even after I years, don't, aren't wanting to try sometimes. Yeah, maybe. This was this was a couple of years in. I, that tank looks rubbish to me. There's a Duncan on the right that looks really sad, pissed yeah. off. Look at the sand covered in algae. And all that sort of, anyway, whatever. Um, but yeah, th so that was a blue background. I, I think I prefer a black background, to be fair. But I did. One thing I said, so the reason I went for the peninsula in the end was because I had uh, a, a small, like it was a, like a one mini reef 120. So it was a little cube, basically. And I looked through the side of it. And when you look through two panes of glass, the tank just looks so bright. So there's no background at all. It looks so bright. Whereas when yeah. you look against the black background, it's a bit dark. And I loved seeing through two panes of glass. So having the peninsula against the wall, apart from the wallpaper, <laughs> it was really bright because there, were, there was no background. So it looked really cool. And yeah, it made the, whole... the wallpaper. <laughs> I never noticed that, though. Like, day one, you're like, oh, look, wallpaper. But after day one, you forget about it. And and then, you know, you get reminded because people comment on it. <laughs> yeah, <it>. true. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I two panes, and actually the water box here. So it's it's got the back to, to the wall where the camera is and the and so i can see through two sides and it's, it's really bright because i can see two through two panels of glass um and that is what i really like that i have to say so. see i i would hate that I really? I, like yeah i if i want something behind I, obviously i know you have a back a background on that tank you're just looking from the side of it yeah. but no i think i'm not sure i'd ever want a peninsula tank i just don't i just don't like just don't like the look of them I don't like, it, like in yeah. your case, especially the one in your living room. I do. I just did not like the fact you could see through it. It, it it's really? like a distraction. It takes away from what from the tank itself. Well, even if what if the wall was white behind it? 
if the wall was black, it would be different. What? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it would be weird to have a black wall, wall. <laughs> but if your wall was black, it would look more normal, wouldn't it? But... Um, I don't know. I just, I just love seeing because my wall here behind this one uh, is is white, just white wall, <laughs> and you can see it. But oh, it's wicked! I love seeing through two panes of glass. It looks really cool. But all right, yeah, um, each to their own. <laughs> what was I going to say? I think have we have we wrapped up uh, high to low? Oh yeah, no, no. I think that's everything in week and reefing for me. Aptasia X was the last thing um, that I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be using. But that's it. Anything else from you in your week and reefing? No, no. Well, in think. which case, last week uh, I forgot member questions. Not good. That means we got double I'll... member questions. And you didn't remind me. So, sorry, uh, I, so... I apologise for that. So really, it's all your fault. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to remember them this week. So we got double uh, member questions. So apologies to the two who I missed last week. First was from Gary McConnell, who says he's going to upgrade to a 600 millimeter cube from a Fluval Evo. I think he's asked this question today as well. Any suggestions? I'm looking at a Red Sea 170 or a Waterbox 60.2. What would your suggestions be for one of those two or a different one? Do you have any input? It's, it's less than six foot, Ryan, so I don't know how you feel about it. Like, if you're, if you're looking at a, a Red Sea or a Waterbox, they're both roughly the same. Like, mm. the, you will be happy with either one because you'll never know what the other one was actually like. Do you see, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's like they're both good tanks. They both have pros and cons like to them. But yeah. whichever one you pick, you won't be wrong because you'll be happy with you'll be happy with both. None of the none of the main uh, manufacturers make bad tanks anymore. They're they're all really good. Yeah. Um, I actually would go for option three, which is the Red Sea Reefer two hundred XL, because that's wider front to back, bigger. <clears throat> um, I think it's fifty five centimeters. Is it fifty five centimeters? Oh no, even better, fifty-seven point five, <laughs> and I think the the other one is fit. But anyway, whatever. The, the bigger, the better, basically, and, and front to back width because it makes your aquascape a bit more gentle, a bit nicer. But yeah, the the the, the Gen Two Red Sea Reefers have stepped up their game quite a lot, and I think the plumbing is better. But they're both really good tanks, and I don't think you'd if you got like if one came up on offer, twenty percent off, or you could, have you got a six month old one for half price or something, go for that. I, I'm looking forward to seeing your new tank because the one thing I want to I want to feel is the build quality of the stand because that's what Waterbox do really well. I think when you touch the doors, they feel heavy, and when you, yeah. you think, whenever you pick something out that's heavy, you feel like it's high quality, yeah. even though <laughs> even though it makes no difference, it's irrelevant, but it feels high quality. Whereas I remember the Red Sea um, doors didn't feel like that; they felt like really? they were like cheap. And although it's irrelevant, I can't wait to come to your house and just press the door <laughs> just to see how it feels. Uh, I mean, that's that's a top end tank, so that'll be it's it five grand tank. It's it was a nice. much smaller tank, the one the, the Red Sea yeah. I had. So yeah. I, that's why I'm interested to see if they if the the more expensive, bigger tanks yeah. have a, a built better. If you see what I mean. So the, the the doors on my Red Sea didn't feel any different to the doors on the Waterbox in that they both feel fairly solid and neither of them felt cheap. But the one thing, the Cade behind me, the heaviest stand I've ever, it's tiny little <laughs> yeah, 50, yeah. Centimeter, 50 centimeter. It's so heavy yeah. and it's aluminium and oh, that's really proper solid. That's going nowhere. Yeah. Um, but this, the Red Sea one that I'm getting is uh, is aluminium as well, which feels a bit more solid. Yeah, yeah. That, but, yeah. But yeah. So. Um, but I would go for the, the Reefer 200 XL, but any of those actually the dd reef pro 600 as well is worth a look i don't know if on the smaller one it has the corner uh, sloping weir box that's quite cool um are there any other tanks i'd look at i would look at try to get a six month old tank any of them basically yeah. Not, don't be too fussy if it's six months old it'll be in almost mint condition you'll get it half price and then if it doesn't matter if it's the water box the red sea or the dd you'll get a really good deal uh, you and yeah. they come up quite often you might have to wait a couple of months but, but if you want to go brand new I don't any of them. I don't think uh, the the two hundred XL is the one I would go for, but I don't think I I wouldn't say oh you can't get the water box or you can't get the the DD. Even the the Cades are, are nice. They're all nice. Yeah, that's. I think yeah, any of them will be fine because yeah. as I said a, a minute ago, you will not know if you have both of them. You might have a preference, but you won't have both of them. <laughs> no, there there are pros and cons of both, and I I've done a video comparing Red Sea and Waterbox. It's 
a little outdated now because Waterbox, sorry, Red Sea have updated all their tanks since then. So their plumbing has improved and I uh, I didn't like the plumbing so much before. And there's yeah. other things that have changed. But you can go and you can go and look at that video and that will tell you the sorts of differences that you get between the tanks. They're minor. Like the plumbing, I think the plumbing on the water boxes was better before. Now I think it's probably level or if not better. I liked that the Red Sea one, you could remove the baffles uh, for to put in a, a filter roller. Whereas on the water box, you couldn't, but I think that might have changed now. And I like that the, the, the water box had a gate yeah. valve, whereas the Red Sea had a diaphragm valve. Red Sea now has supposedly improved the diaphragm valve, so maybe that's not such a big thing. But they're all little things like that that uh, that don't really make a huge difference. The Red Sea one has a removable um, weir comb, whereas yeah. the water box doesn't, although some of the water box do. <laughs> so, but even if it if it's got a removable weir comb or not, it's, that's that's not a reason to not to buy it or to buy it. So because yeah, the chances are you'll never remove it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I had to eventually because you got covered in a, a basing out aircraft. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not. You don't it just get the one that you think looks the best or that you get the best deal on or that yeah. fits in your space best. I don't think there's any of them I would say you've got to go for this one or you don't go for that one or whatever I say. I don't know if that's helpful. I I, I think it is, <laughs> but sorry if we've just kind of said, yeah, whatever. You pick pick whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but that's I think that's a that's an honest answer. Um number question number two. It's from take uh, this is from Edward, who says he's taking a big leap this week. After finally keeping Pockies and Monty's healthy, I'm adding a few acros from Tidal Gardens. Oh, very fancy. Um, I have a, an ITC par wise. What par should I look for when picking spots? Minimum par would be greatly appreciated. Hashtag cult of cow Good man. <laughs> I'm going to let you um, first because you're, um, you're the acro man. So I actually answered this last week because I followed up because I'd forgotten. So I said yeah. uh, 200 to 350 is generally recommended for SPS. So 200 is your, your minimum. Yeah. And that remains my answer a week on. <laughs> yeah. So you can, there are some people who will run uh, uh, lights really high, really really high par, um, and uh, and have great success. But the, it's best to, especially if you're getting used to new corals, acros. Yeah, it's best to um, not to not to push it and just go like uh, WWC always keep it between two hundred and three fifty. I think that's yeah, yeah. Um, that's what they do. Their tanks are all right, <laughs> so yeah. go for that. I would go for two to three fifty. Um, but acros probably want more lights than Monty's. Oh, de obviously, definitely. Yeah, well, they do want more light than Monty. Yeah, that, yeah. Doesn't, that doesn't mean that if you're giving your Monty too much light, you should give the acro even more light. But anyway, there you go. Yeah, the the, the more, not the more, the better. Two to three, two to three fifty. <laughs> um, and so that's last week's questions. Again, sorry for the tardiness. This week's questions, Gary McConnell. <laughs> I think is is he the one who we've just asking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so he's the same question. So Gary, same answer. Um, uh, next one is from Das Lettuce Ryan. Since you're quarantining all your fish again, this seems like a good opportunity to pick up that Achilles tang. Uh, how soon till we see a new Achilles update in, in an update video? <laughs> yeah, look, Achilles seem to come in um, like batches where you can get them at certain times of year. Uh, okay. I haven't seen an, an Achilles, but I've yeah. So there are there have been a few around, but there haven't been a few that I've not actually seen one personally myself. So I am not I've not been tempted. Would I get one? I am once I'm once I've quarantined these fish, <laughs> I feel like I'm done for fish for a while. Because obviously I'm gonna have to wait up to three months. So I've just do I want to put more back in? And then tempt fate again with a fish, which is particularly bad for 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 um for for disease. Mm, I would quarantine it by itself. Right. I I'll be honest with you. I am actually looking for new fish at the moment, um for because I just think I can put them in that other in the seventy liter tank if it's something small, and I can get it out 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 of the way now, because otherwise I'm going to have to start an entirely new quarantine period. If you see what I mean, <clears throat> I just I want to I want to put the fish in and go right. I'm done for fish for a while. So if that will happen or not, I don't know. I've got RAS. I've got tangs for algae control and RAS for pest control. So I don't need anything like once they're in and I can just leave it. Mm -hmm. So I just think that I've been burnt recently and I'm not in the mood for buying <laughs> for buying the Achilles at the moment, especially when they're like 600 pounds. 
Yeah, I wouldn't touch an Achilles. I'd love an Achilles, but I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. <laughs> it's not. It isn't just a disease either. They have they have a thing where they're just happy just to not eat uh, until they yeah, die. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So it's it's not it's not like some fish are are prone to uh, hunger strikes. Mm -hmm. So that fish has lots of things going wrong with it, not just like one thing going wrong with it. If you see what I mean. So copper bands, once you get them feeding. And once, and once, if you if there's no aggression, they're usually pre okay. Whereas an Achilles will be aggressive. It will be it will uh, potentially introduce a disease, and there is a high possibility that no matter what you feed it, it will still starve. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like it's it. a high high <laughs> risk. Yeah. So I, so I just don't think. Um, I'm going to interject the member questions with moderator questions. Yeah. Uh, Ideal KH in your your guy's opinion. I don't think there is an ideal KH person. But oh, um, eight point four is why you, is what people usually recommend mm -hmm. around that. So, so my, I, I tell you what, let me tell you what my alkalinity is in both of my tanks at the moment. It's going to be like six. <laughs> eight point five. Yes. There you go. Okay. See? So, it's, so it's eight point five on the Cade. Yeah. What's it? What is it on the water box? No way. Eight point five four. So it's eight. Yeah, it's eight point five four on the water box and eight point five two on the cage. So it's eight point five basically. But you almost got a gold star. I know. Yeah, oh, it's too high. I need to get it down. But so yeah. I, I, I generally, I like. I'm happy when it's around eight. Yes. But like, because it, it will go down. If it gets down to seven, I want to bump it up. And if it gets up to nine, I want to bump it down. If I could, if you want me to give you an answer, eight is roughly eight, eight and a half, something like that is roughly where I would yeah. like it to be because that gives you a buffer. And one, if these KH keepers, because the pH probes drift over time, um, the, the dosing heads need um, calibrating. So if that alkalinity, if it's telling me it's eight and a half and it's actually seven and a half, well, then that get eight, a, a, param, a level of eight gives you a bit of a buffer zone. Yes. But also that gives you a bit of a buffer zone if it starts to swing. So, you know, so around eight, eight and a half. But, Do you know what else is important as well? What's that? The general consensus is that most people will keep it around between eight and nine. So you can run it at nine. You can run it at 11. I actually had mm -hmm. run it at 12 at one point so to increase growth, but you also have to increase light and nutrients. So do not increase your alkalinity <laughs> to 12, people. <laughs> That's not me recommending it. But if everyone else, including fish shops, other reefers, are all running their tanks roughly that around that amount, mm -hmm. you don't want to run yours at 12 because then it stresses the new corals you put in. I've never understood that idea of, or not, not actually, that's not true that I've never said, but I don't like the idea of, of aiming for a high alkalinity to increase growth. Because it's like, don't try to force it. There are so many other things you can do that are better uh, for increasing growth than trying to rush it, living it's, on a ragged edge. <laughs> people think that they, if you increase alkalinity, you'll get better growth. Most people get burnt tips <laughs> because yeah. what they don't realize is you have to increase alkalinity, calcium, magnesium. You have to increase everything to mm, give okay. the coral everything it needs uh, to to do it. Can you I've do it? Yes. It, the corals don't grow as 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 uh, hardy. They are they're they're not as thick either. When you when you increase, have you, have you done it before then? Yeah, my my thousand liter tank was run with, uh, at twelve. Uh, so I, yeah, so I used to, I used to. Um, I, I write like that for years, uh, <laughs> but I don't recommend it. And quite often, um, people will only increase their alkalinity, not realizing you have to increase everything. <laughs> right, okay. It has, yeah. It's about a balance, but it's the same as any uh, uh, everything to do with our tank. It's about balance. Yeah. So it's you are correct. It's not worth doing. This is what I say to people: stop trying to turbocharge your tanks. Completely. But just yeah. you like if especially if you're in a beginner and so most people who want to turbocharge their tanks have tanks with not a lot of coral in because they're relatively yeah. new. But that's the worst thing you can do because what you should do is you should just aim to keep your coral alive and just wait and you'll but get so, the same result. I think uh, that was a time when I was thinking about temperature and all these sorts of things that uh, that might improve growth and because but now it's like I just patience if it takes two years it takes two years that's fine yeah. it's hard to see that way and you want you don't if you've had a tank for six months and nothing's really grown you want to try to do things to boost it but there are better ways getting your flow right your lighting right your parameters right just generally keeping your salinity steady and all that sort of stuff that will be that will have a better impact than just whacking up your alkalinity for example if you want a far less <laughs> risky way of 
increasing your growth by 50 percent without having to do pardon he's gonna say it people go on (laughs) what am i gonna say (laughs) oh he's not gonna say it i'm intrigued by what you're about to say what you think i'm gonna say now Tell me what 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 should people do to growth uh, increase growth by fifty percent? Buy two pieces. Oh, it's such a salesman. <laughs> no, no, that isn't that's that, it, yeah. That no, it's is, is, yeah. is, is like simple mathematics. Basically, you you don't you will not stress your corals. They'll grow twice as quickly. Um, there are some people that do that. It, some people will sometimes buy four or five pieces of one coral from me, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is odd. But but yeah. they're doing what I'm suggesting. If you see what I mean. Cost twice so, as much money though if you buy two. My answer is going to be: I thought you were going to say Calcrusser. No, that wasn't what I was going to suggest. <laughs> but you could do that. Yeah. But yeah, but, then, it, but even people get the wrong idea with Calcrusser. And I, I get the comment I get most often is: I'm dosing a load of Calcrusser, but my alkalinity keeps going up. How can I stop? And the answer yeah. is: dose less Calcrusser because that's what it does. So yeah. Don't just try <laughs> yeah. to pour in as much as you can. Anyway, whatever. I, I've, I've made a video on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there you go. A seven point uh, eight point four is the correct answer, according to Ryan. Exactly eight point four. No higher. Exactly no eight point four. No. So I'm don't... I'm in trouble because I'm your 8.4. tank will settle somewhere between eight and nine usually. Like if yeah, you're that's, if you're that's, that's, that's my happy place really. Eight yeah. to nine. But... Um, but yeah, okay. Um, more member. One final member question, Edward. Uh, and this is oh, I think he asked last week as well. Supervillain. Did I say supervillain origin? Yeah. So is supervillain origin a film or something? No, well, I, know. I don't watch films, do I? <laughs> origin unsatisfied with comments and likes at the lfs and socials i decided to prove my genius with my first icp test it came back 52 captain reef dork what came back 52 52 um captain reef dork the prestige kid can you talk me out of hitting the button that releases the clown trigger the grouper i think this is a brs thing and reroutes the skimmate into the display tank Bwahahaha. Or maybe talk about this is a hobby that when you think you have the hang of it, it goes sideways. Do you understand that? I zoned out probably about four words in. So I was waiting for you. That actually happens quite a lot when we, when there's member questions. You then re- repeat it for me again. <laughs> I don't understand that. I'm sorry, Edward. I don't understand that. If you're in the chat. I've seen you. So tell me what I'm missing. But I, I don't want get... to know why I'm called Prestige the Kid. The Prestige Kid, yeah. And Captain Reef Dog. I like that I'm Captain. Is that like Billy the Kid? I'm like some uh, sort of cowboy, yeah. or am I just like a kid? <laughs> I think it's more like Alex the Kid. Did you have Alex the Kid on the Master System? Bet you didn't. No. You're too young. <sighs> no, too young. Who, who in the chat had Alex the Kid on the Master System? <laughs> I don't know and, what a Master System is. Oh, Sega. Did, did you have a Mega Drive? Or did you have a PlayStation? Did, no, you, did you have computer my, games? My first ever uh, was a Nintendo... Oh, I had a Game Boy, but my first ever was a Nintendo 64. Um so okay so i actually have coincidentally and this is another tangent i was googling yesterday the atari Lynx. 10 points for anyone in the chat who had an atari links it was awful but there was one game called xenophobe <laughs> that was really good fun and there was a racing game i can't remember what it was but um <laughs> Oh, it's brilliant. It was really good. So yeah, 10 points you win if you've if you had an Atari um links. <laughs> it's funny the impact that they have because you remember these from when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I remember the very it was Mario Kart. That was the first game I ever had. And I played okay. my granddad and I and I lost and I cried. And I was <laughs> and I was 21. <laughs> no, I wasn't 21. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember yeah. Echo the Dolphin. That was on yeah, Sega. So uh, yeah, yeah, Echo the Dolphin. No, that was a bit crap to be honest, but I still liked it. But yeah, I so I used to be into game P- uh, PlayStations and all that lot, quite a lot. But I, I kind of and then you met it. someone. <laughs> no, not even that. Like I had a play a PS3. I think it was was the last one I had, or maybe it was a PS4. I can't remember. PS3, I think. And I just I kept buying games. I'd play them once and never play them again. Yeah. So I think I just kind of got bored of it. But I remember when I was at school, I used to think I like I had a conversation with one of my mates when I was like, I've just seen what salary you can earn when you were grown up. And it was like, I don't know, 20 grand a year or whatever. I was like, we could buy a new game every week. Yeah, I know. I remember. <laughs> we were yeah. genuinely like, oh, that's what I'll do. <laughs> uh, it, it is funny that that, because I, I saw a meme on that the other day saying, when, when I'm older, I'll be able to buy all the games I want. And then it's like, when you're older, you haven't got the energy to play all the games you want yeah. or the desire. Yeah. 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 But I've never had a PlayStation. Not for me. Never I have an Xbox and I have a Nintendo oh, okay. Switch. 
I never um, had an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch or an N64. Yeah, no, Nintendo 64 was, was, was way better than the PlayStation. This is going to date me now. Did you ever have a Sinclair ZX Spectrum? I'm not even sure what words you just said. <laughs> okay. It, it had like, you, you played the games were on tape and you press play and it's like, like a fax. Yeah. Did you used to play Pac Man? <laughs> mm, yeah, Tetris. probably. Yeah, I played Tetris. Yeah. Someone, I didn't have a, have a Game Boy. I, they were, and the only rich kids had Game Boys, but I used to pinch people, like play with people, Game Boys at yeah. school. Uh, Pressy Reef Talk Show. Hang on, fish. Right, carry on. Um, so that's. People I think bored of the fish I'm... sometimes. They want to hear about uh, us. I know, yeah. But um, but that's uh, and there's yeah, lots of people have had uh, uh, game gears and stuff in the chat. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so that's all of the, the member questions, and we've done mod questions as well. <coughs> uh, I'll tr Les, if you ever want to post questions every week, we can have we can have a regular sesh, regular um, section. So it's moderator questions. Um, Alex, I'll show you my age and see if you remember the name Salman Rushdie. Well, I know who he is. Uh, bought a Lynx for his son. Uh, and his son and me. Hang on a second. Salman Rushdie bought a Lynx for his son and me when we were on holiday with him whilst uh, whilst he was in hiding. That's mental. I don't know what any of that means. A, a Lynx, a as far as I'm concerned, is a big cat or yeah. or a deodorant cat. <laughs> so, Do you know who Salman Rushdie is? I recognise the name, but no. Okay. Um I think he's dead now. Is he dead? Anyway. He, uh, he the, did he get stabbed? Uh, possibly. He wrote a book called The Satanic Verses. Yeah, was, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he I did forget get what, He didn't, I forget he didn't what, die from it. I did not. I forget what religion it was, but I think he was critical of uh, his Islamic faith. I can't remember what it was now, but he, he was basically, there was like a, uh, people didn't like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the coolest um, celebrity uh, story we've had. Uh, yeah, Islamic. Yeah. Anyway, so moving on, we now have the Prestige Reef fish of the week, and we there we get, there we do have a, a pre-prepared fish this week. We do have a pre-prepared fish, which I'm impressed with. <laughs> this week, I have gone. Remember, I like to show people like weird things you don't see all the time. Uh, I am going to go for a dragon moray eel, and I uh, always wanted one of these when I first started. Uh, my well, yeah, when I first started my tank, I only wanted a fresh. Um, not fresh water. I only wanted a fish only tank. And okay. this was one of the fish I wanted in this is how stupid I was. I wanted <laughs> one of these, a puffer fish, a frog fish, <laughs> um, a trigger fish, and all those sorts of and a shark. That's what I wanted when I first when I first started. And uh, I look back now and think that was such a stupid idea. Uh, because the frogfish would have been a pain in the ass to feed. That eel probably would have taken bites out of everything because they do eat fish. Uh, but they're also they cost two thousand pounds. So, so if you want a fish which is not very active, you can't keep anything with it, <laughs> and cost two thousand two thousand pounds, and this is the fish for you. There you go. But, uh, do they get massive? Uh, yes, they do, and they I think they also will bite you as well. Oh, really? No, yeah. No. Look at those teeth. Look at those teeth as well. Yeah. 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 You don't want to get bitten by that. They used to have um, a whole tank full of about seven of them. Uh, I, well, it could be five, it could be seven. Um, at London Aquarium, there was a, there was just a tank at the very end that just had dragon mm. eels in it. Um, that's the only place I've ever seen them. Okay, uh, I was going to suggest a um, uh, a fish of the week this week. It's a scribble. Well, you can't. well I know. That's not your thing. We're going to have fishes of the week this week. Okay. And the one I was going to suggest was a scribbled leather jacket file fish. Ever heard of them? Uh, I might recognize a picture of them, but I saw one of these in uh, my local fish shop, Reefkeeper Moss End, today or yesterday, whenever I was in. And it's, it's a horrible looking fish. But then I saw this photo on Instagram on the Quality Marine. Ever seen that? I have. Mm, I've seen fish that look similar to that. I couldn't say it was the same one. It's a funny looking, very long file yeah. fish. Weird. Do they get uh, massive? Twenty-two inches long. <laughs> apparently, I feel like I've seen them in the wild. Oh, really? Like you see fish that are, they might not be exact that exact fish, but a fish that looks similar to that. Yeah. So I'd never seen one before. I saw it in the shop today. I was like, oh, and then I saw it on uh, Quality Mean. So I guess there's a, a, a bunch of them or whatever. It's in season. I don't know whatever. But yeah. Okay. So any dragon moray eel is the prestige reef fish of the week. Yes. Oh, no, I've jo I had the uh, the coral of the week lined up, but I've, I've just... Right, tell uh, us what the... I was all ready, and look at look at this. You're not even... I'm ready. Um, 
<clears throat> right. So the core of the week is actually one of my favorite corals, which I don't think is appreciated enough by people. Uh, I have gone for a fungia. Uh, fungias are cool. <laughs> which, no, they're, they're usually quite bright. You can get them in, mm. um, most of them are green. You get them in orange, like that one. Uh, you get them uh, with white with like a purple edge. Okay. And uh, also the more expensive ones are red usually. Although you get a couple which are or half orange and half green. There's, there's that, that one there. You can see a half orange and half green one was actually my coral. No, up one. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That, yeah, that one. That, that, that literally is my picture. It was very yeah. expensive. Uh, so quid. Did you sell it? I did. Wow. Yeah. It was like one of a kind. <laughs> but it's got little bits of green bleeding in the other side as well. I know. Right? It was, That's it cool. was, there was a, there, there were a few of these popped up because uh, they had a couple in a, um, uh, popped up in America. And then yeah. I, and I got that one. Um, and uh, yeah, it sold. I can't remember if it sold at the full price or if it was a, like a, someone did a 20% discount or something on it, but it, it did sell. Um, and the reason it sold for that, it was so expensive, was it because it cost me so much money as well? Yeah. But, Fungiers are pretty tough. So I just thought, it's, it's, although it's going to cost me a lot, I used to buy corals that I liked so I could look at them, knowing that no one's ever going to buy them yeah. <laughs> until someone eventually buys them. And then I'm like, oh, I really like that. But I find them charismatic, which is, it sounds like a weird <laughs> thing to say. It does. Uh, but they, they blow up at night into these like big, to like triple the size. And also, when you put food on them, you can watch the food go up into the center, and then the mouth opens, and the food goes in, and then the mouth closes over it. Yeah, okay. So I've got two tiny fungiers, but they were the, the my local fish shop fragged them, so they were like slice of pizza shaped. But they've now started to grow into a proper fungier shape. Uh, one is orange, the other one is I think it's green and blue, maybe. Are they definitely fungiers? Because there's something that's very similar to fungiers. It's not a heliofunga. Fungi. No, no, there's, I can't remember the name of it. There's something that, that are often sold as fungiers, which, which someone in the chat would say. Um, and when the, when the name comes up, I'll, I'll say, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. It's, I, th I think it begins with M. It's got some weird, like, I'd, I definitely would recognize it, but they are fungiers. They look like fungiers, but they frag themselves. Oh, really? Um, whereas, I don't know. Whereas, I'll have to have a closer look. I'm not sure if you can frag normal fungiers. I don't know. Well, you, you probably can. have a look because these are my first ever fungiers. <laughs> yeah. But just talk about um, uh, fungiers for a bit and I'm going to go and have a look. <laughs> well, I'm just, you, I like how you just walk off just as I am. Um... Right. What do you want to talk about about fungiers? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're back. That was. Good. I thought you were going downstairs, but I realised you haven't got. A no, 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 no. It's definitely they're definitely fungus. Oh well, I say they are. They've got the mouth in the middle, and they look like fungus to me. I want someone no to. Because uh, I bought. Are they round? Uh, yes, they are now. Maybe but they maybe weren't when I first true. got them. Yeah. But uh, the, you said earlier that um, or a go, Alex, you're just in your pants. Uh, I oh, know. I can't tell you that story. I are you? So I didn't even I did, notice that. that no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm wearing. I'm wearing jeans. Oh. But I did. I, I I once was on a on a video. Did it look like I was? I'm wearing jeans. I promise. I didn't um, even notice. But everyone's saying you're in your boxers. I'm not. Look, look, look. I'll prove it. <laughs> That's I'm not but sure. I, I'm not I, sure I like that pose. I was once. I know. I was once on a video call, and I was just wearing my boxers and like shirt up for, and uh, I uh, I had to I had to leave and I had to like try to stand up without like showing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, must have looked really weird. But anyway, oh. um, I'm not so, even wearing boxers. I always do these with no pants on or, or trousers. Uh, wear your hands right now. Can you keep keep them up here at all times, please? Because otherwise, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, you said earlier that you buy corals that uh, you like. Yes. Yeah. Like this I, red and black lobo. I know. Well, no, that came on. That came as uh, on an import. That was just random. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I've got two hundred quid of store credit for prestigereef.co.uk, haven't I? True. You're not going to uh, take that lobo, are you? That would cover that. Yeah, but would you don't hurt. like it. I, I liked it when I saw it, didn't I? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would, that would be brutal. If you took that, it would hurt so much. <laughs> <laughs> now i've seen now i can buy it and it's free as well that's even better that's true that is you don't yeah. get any money <laughs> true. Oh. Now, you know oh, you said you, you, yes. you were waiting for me to get you back earlier diaceris oh yeah diaceris i'm pretty sure that's the one that people often think of funny yes yeah that is exactly it 
Okay, so let me let me diaceris. Okay, so there's let me show you this one. So is this a diaceris? Yes. It is definitely not one of those. I I think there's there they also is have this diaceris. Well, it's sold as a diaceris. So yeah, but... I would say because I have a diaceris at the moment, which is gold. It looks quite right. similar to one of those pictures, and it look and it has those little tentacles on it. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure they're fun. these are actually a bit more. If it was like this, this would be really cool. But I don't think it is. Oh, colorblind diaceris. Yeah, I don't think it is that you know, but it could be. It's they're very similar, isn't it? Yeah, they are. They are similar. But these one of are them, much brighter colors than than mine. One of them, I think, can be fragged, and one of them, I might be completely wrong. Yeah. Okay. You might be right. I might if I maybe I've got a diaceris. I think so. These are all really cool colours. I'm pretty sure it's a it's a fungi. They they don't look the the polyps look um more uniformly patterned than these. Go down but, one picture. Uh, yeah, that one. Oh, oh no, well, that's no, not it's, not, it's not like that. I think I don't think it. I think it's. I think they're fungi. These do look quite different actually. But yeah. could be. Will you buy it off me for double the price if it's a diaceris? No, I'm going to try and sell you my diaceris I've got. I've got a nice gold one. And because it's gold, very expensive. Quality bare bottom joke from JJ. Ryan knows yes. what Alex likes, bare bottom. Um, anyway. I'm sure uh, that's, so, referring <laughs> that's, that's referring to like an hour ago. The <laughs> Two minutes ago when we were just talking about... Uh, no, never mind. Uh, oh, I see, I see, oh, yes. Okay. okay. So th those are the prestige reef fish and coral of the week. Which means we are now onto the news. And I've got good news for you, Ryan. Uh, we have uh, it's products, but it's fish tanks, which is. That's not good news. It's better than lights. Come on, it's better than a contact. Why would you get my hopes up? I was I think, okay, look at this amazing new fish. Actually, there is a fish that you can probably you can probably show that's on reef builds at the moment. I. That's not in the news, but we'll 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 we will we will do it. So yeah. the first thing is, and I've been getting a lot of this lately from saltwateraquarium.com, um, who are currently in Reefstock Denver, and there is one thing uh, this week that they said that was new, and this is the PNW Custom Small in One is called tank. It's a one gallon rimless tank. Why? I'm glad you made that uh, that that was your reaction because my reaction. What did I write down in my notes? terrible idea that is what I, wrote. <laughs> I hate so, so these are glass now whereas there are other ones that were acrylic so this won't scratch at these although you can get it acrylic if you want they're 139 dollars i like that the picture makes it look like there's a massive light on it <laughs> yeah it does there's a kettle ap9x behind it but the, yeah. the light is obviously is this tiny little one here <laughs> but it comes with all the equipment and all that sort of stuff it comes with a light and a heater i think yeah um and it's glass, so that's better than acrylic. But it's $139 in the States. You can't get it in the UK. Um, for, for another $50, you can get a Fluval Evo, which is 13 times the size of that. People will put fish in that one-gallon tank. And that's just, and that tank will look awful for most people in six months. You would have to be... A, so it'll probably look awful in like a week. <laughs> No, yeah okay but when the by the time for the first week your sand will look nice and everything will be happier but six months down the line you'll just have algae everywhere and uh, what you're I, saying is the biggest waste of money if you want to get a reef tank get a proper one it's not the biggest waste of money but and actually that they're, they're little they're, they're pnw custom tiny one the like uh one liter tank quarter of a gallon that was that was even more expensive that was crazy and they are an absolutely horrific idea <laughs> these aren't so bad but for an extra 50 bucks, you get a Fluval Evo, which is a really good tank. I they would... must sell them. Yeah. And they're quite, that one's quite cheap. But it probably, it feels like a good idea. And then you get it and it's like, oh God, this is rubbish. Mm. But I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of those. Sorry, PNW Customs. Uh, I don't like it. But if they sell, they sell. So, you know, I, just, I, just, I don't like the idea. People will put fish, people put like a little yellow clown goby or whatever in there. And it's like, yeah. that's too small for a fish. True. Any fish. I'm just um, laughing at the comments. <laughs> what, uh, what are the comments? There's two. Well, someone wrote um, "Twist the knife" um, about you know about you buying that I coral. Twenty percent. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, because it, because it will twist the knife, so I get I get less for it. That's a good shout. <laughs> and the other one is again. See, I pronounced Lysia's name wrong. Lysa, Lysia. How would you pronounce Lysia. that? Lysia. Oh, there you go. Um, I quite like that one because it is so true. This is my favourite part because Ryan's failed attempt to be interested in Alex's new products. Best bit every single week. 
This is what people come here for. They come here to watch my face as I try and be entertained. <laughs> um, what uh, what else is there? I mean, is there anything else in the in the in the in the chat? I don't think so. No. Um, okay, so yeah, one one gallon tank. I mean, save your money, buy a buy a bigger tank than that. Anyway, yeah. uh, so that is. But you can get you can now buy a one gallon tank if you wish, if you're in America. Um, the next piece of news is, and actually, I quite like this. This is, you know, Twitter is now called X. Yes. I'm not on Twitter. I don't like it. Anyway. So it's now called X, and you can put videos on X. Uh, so what are they called? X videos. That's not a good sound, is it? It's not a good name. No, okay. probably not. Yeah. Uh, and now you can get the Cade X on that note. Uh, and these are little add on aquariums. I think this is a really good idea, actually. So these are little, it's these little add on aquariums on the side. That you can yeah. connect to your existing your main tank, and it's basically like a little frag tank, or you can keep whatever in it. So it's it all runs on the same system, yeah, and it all connects up really easily. It, here's the the plumbing map, but it's really easy to plug in basically. And they've even thought through things like there's a little gap between the the two aquariums, so you can get an, an algae magnet down the side. Okay. And basically, you can you can put this on any put this on any tank you want. You could put it on a Red Sea Reefer, a, a water box, but they're designed to go with the Cades, all the Cade tanks. And I think it gave a list. It was everything. Um, or I don't think it would fit on my one, which is the smallest. But anything else, they they they, they sit right next to you and they're perfect and you can get the right sizes. So you could you could set up a frag tank. I always, So I had a frag tank in my sump before and it actually wasn't a very good idea. But having a frag tank next to it, having a separate frag tank on its own system is a pain in the ass because then you've got to keep the water, the fresh water top up. You've got to change the dosing. You've got to do double the testing, all that sort of stuff. Whereas having it on the same water volume as your main tank is really good. and But setting that up is a pain in the backside. But now Cade have brought out a system that you can just plug and play. I like that. I, went, I, did, I saw that article. I thought it's, it's a novelty, which I think some people will do. But I can't. I can't imagine. Like, imagine if you like in your living room, you get you got yeah. your tank, and then you go, "Oh, I'm just going to put this other smaller tank next." It looks a bit yeah, odd. It would look completely. And I, I actually thought about that. I thought, oh, well, "Would I get one of those?" And I wouldn't. Yeah. Because it wouldn't look. I want it to look really nice. But if yeah. you want that, so that's. I think that's quite a niche product. But for the people who like it, I think that's a really cool idea. It reminds who's who's is it. Danny's aquariums, you know, where he's got yeah. someone, someone's got three tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't want to mention this, but he has 130,000 followers just to, just to let you know. I think it's more like 140. Is it? I, I looked yeah. at it, I saw it today. Um, I think it's, yeah. anyway. Yeah, just because you know how you're overtaking everyone. Just, just, yeah, to I'm, I'm, that, so Danny's aquarium, I'm never going to catch, to be fair. Well, I can never, I can never gauge how well he does, though, because he gets a lot of short views yeah. and the, the, and the places I look don't separate short views from main views. Uh, yeah. He's 140,000. Well done, Dan. Oh, okay, so I only double you, just to, just to bring you back down to earth. Oh yeah, double <laughs> bastard. <laughs> so... Yeah, can everybody unsubscribe from him now, please? <laughs> yeah. um, no, he's he's joins in the chat sometimes. He's, uh, he? he's he's very good. Yeah. So these are these are the um, the tanks that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So we see what he's done there. Where he's got three tanks. Yeah. I think if you were going to get those Cade tanks, you would need to have two to even out to make it look like that oh i see so it's symmetrical yes i couldn't have one it would drive, it would, it would, oh, it would drive me crazy yeah okay because that does look really nice actually doesn't it, it looks like a kind of a, yeah. like a, a designed shop yeah that's a fair point actually go back to the cades yeah and actually the main picture is one on either side but that looks i'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of two but yeah anyway niche product but i think it's cool that they've they've come up with it there was a tank that was on ultimate reef once which i think is a clever idea it might be 12 foot it could be 14 foot or whatever but it was like an l shaped it went along the wall you've probably seen this yes so it, it went that way and then it went that way so it was an l shape and yeah. in and on in the back was um a, a fish only system and in the corner there was there, there was a separate tank built into that 12 foot tank oh, which crazy. had a reef tank in it just in the corner and then the big fish could swim behind the reef all the way along and then he would ha and then obviously he would have a reef in the middle which yeah, okay. I, it's probably a pain in the ass practically yeah um but it was a it was a, a a novelty idea i wonder if it's still going i don't know i don't think i've seen it i don't know the one you're talking about it's but... a it's a cool tank yeah so I like and I was, the reason i thought of that idea was because with those k tanks you could have small fish if you wanted in the little tanks and then you could have a big fish in the big tank in the middle yeah okay there you go yeah um but it's, I don't want it, 
but I like that uh, it's available. Yeah. And the last piece of news is refactory news. Excuse me. Is refactory news and refactory in the refactory app, you can now get an uh, what's it called? Introducing notification center. And this I found out because it popped up in my app and I found it really irritating, to be completely honest. <laughs> but you can now have an info section that gives you news. Stepping on Artos, Ryan. I've already said that I invented news, but you know. Oh, good. Gives you news. It gives you knowledge, tips and all this sort of stuff. And it gives you promos. I don't want any of that. I just want, if in my refactory app, all I want to know is what's my alkalinity, how much am I dating, all that sort of stuff. So I've turned that off and you can yeah. turn it off. But if you like that sort of thing, it's now available <laughs> so there you go uh and that is not quite the end of the news you wanted to talk about um a fish but before we do that it is friend of the show jerry or it was friend of the show jeremy gay's birthday yesterday i didn't catch the i didn't catch how old he is uh, i don't think it said but uh, happy birthday jeremy there you go happy birthday jeremy i've just realized what fish you were talking about yeah, it's the one that looks like it's got something something wrong with it. It's having a turd, basically. It, but the reason I point out, look how expensive it is. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to cover that up because that offends me. Uh, yeah, twenty grand for this super. <laughs> it looks like super it's got rare. hemorrhoids. It does. That's so. This is genuinely rare as well. So this is a very deep water fish. I think. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred and forty. Hang on. Three hundred meters deep. That's a thousand feet. <laughs> That's very deep. God, yeah. how do you, how do you look at the size of it as well? I can't hand. even catch a yellow assessor in a six foot square <laughs> in front of, <laughs> where it can't get away. How are people catching these thousand feet down? Yeah. And how slowly must they have had to bring it up? That's genuinely, that is worth 20 grand because that, of that's That's why that stuff's sticking out of it, I reckon, because of how it, oh, it, it yeah, being brought up. Decompression thing or something. But that's worth 20 grand because that's, that's some serious effort to get that. I, again, I don't want it. And if it's, if it's 300 meters deep, it's probably not going to like radions at hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it's um, people die collecting fish yeah. that deep sometimes. That that's that's the reason that it stood out to me because it's like people will literally risk their lives to catch one of these fish. Yeah. Well, it's 18, never... 18 degrees C, sixty five Fahrenheit is is the temperature it was in. <laughs> so never been I, caught alive. Who you wonder who's going to buy that fish? Is it worth 20 grand if no one will buy it? Uh, no, nothing's worth anything more than what people pay for it. But I really don't like that fish, <laughs> but it's it's unique. and so It's, it's the crazy. hemorrhoids, isn't it? <laughs> oh, just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, got, it's I can still see it on my, I've closed the screen down. Um, but yeah, it's it's unique and it's newsworthy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just don't like it. Um, was, it was That was the only news you had, right? There was no, no other. Yeah, yeah, I never had any news, do I? All right, we'll wrap it up in it. And that means, with the news over, it's the end of the show. Should we? Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? I'll have a quick look at the chat whilst you're saying, um, no, nothing else I want. <laughs> um, no, nothing else I want. Was that slow enough for you? No, not not by a long not, <laughs> not by a long shot. It's, it's really difficult to read comments, even when like you're just I'm just ignoring you. It's really difficult to read comments. I don't know why. It just is. It, it's uh, funny because some some of them you you like you'll zoom in on and you'll notice. Like yeah. my eyes will be drawn to some. Yeah, yeah. But ninety percent of them I don't even I don't even look at. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you, but, and no. what is even more funny is for some reason during the news. When when you're talking about products, I managed to read all of them. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. I don't know why that is. Um, okay. And the, the only thing I'll put out there is, but why? Says John Wright. And I think that's talking about the 20 grand fish that's got um, some kind of weird It's thing the same as anything. People, people want something that no one else has because it Ooh. makes them feel good. John asks a good question. Is there a stream next Sunday? Because it's Jesus' is day, isn't it? Oh, uh, Jesus isn't isn't worried about about me. He's, he's do you reckon he'll oh, anyway? Um, Is it, if you if you want to, do, I'll be here. Well, there's nothing makes no difference to me. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I don't know actually. I'll see because I kind of like the idea of of um, having a, a weekend off because Easter is like time off and I don't know 
Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not fussed. This is but. what you normally do. You go, oh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Maybe I won't do it. And then, like, half an hour before, but you're like, should we do it? And I'm like, all right. Yeah, then. exactly. Oh, probably then, yeah. And um, you know that I like to put a lot of effort into the fish of the week and the car of the week. So I need more than half an hour to be able to, <laughs> to, be able to get the high level of content hour. that I produce. We've got to do it uh, in Easter Bunny outfits, apparently, which is, I mean, uh, it's a bit weird, but, you know, I'm yeah. True. True. <laughs> um probably i think probably will in that case i yeah what else what else you know I, me, get? I get lonely yeah. don't i yeah you just okay. why not just be sat at home stuffing his face full of easter eggs and crying otherwise so yeah you do this as a public service to talk to me indeed yeah so. um, all right well yeah then there will be in that case uh barring a, a, a cabri's related disaster yeah but in which case and, oh you're about to say something interesting was I? I just said yeah. Oh, you, you had a look. Someone said any interest, any experience with Morish Idols, I would stay away from there if I were you. Yeah, yeah. watch Ryan cry with eggs. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll just put a secret camera on him so he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> James, James will pay to see us at Easter Bunny outfits. How much, James? Because I can be bought. Maybe as well, they should be slutty Easter Bunny. No, that's just for your own fantasy. Sorry, did I say that out loud? Right, on that <laughs> note, <laughs> it's time to end. Um, yes. Oh, no, just quickly, quickly. Cool. There is a 20% off tonight on Carl's. So Interesting. Uh, using the discount code DISCOUNT20 in capital letters. There you discount go. DISCOUNT20. So that so would make... I'm going to take... Pounds off the Lobo. I'm going to take the Lobo off. <laughs> buy it now. £144. Quick, quick, buy it. So All right. DISCOUNT20. I'll 20. cry when that sells. Uh... And we will see you next week. See you later. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.